Hey, Ambitious Dennis, Jonathan Van on here. I hope you've got some really exciting events lined up for the holidays and get to enjoy some much needed rest and relaxation. I recently had the pleasure of being interviewed by Dr. Mark Costas himself on the Dentalpreneur podcast, and we had a ton of fun talking about something that isn't always typically deemed to be a lot of fun and interesting for a lot of people. So, you know, I've always loved how Dr. Costas is you know, able to get the best nuggets of wisdom from his guests. And I think our interview turned out really, really great. So we cover some of the major implications of the new tax cuts and discuss why they might not be so great for some dentist. But worry not, we try to end the interview on a high note. So if you have some spare time while you're preparing meals or out and about shopping, give this interview a listen. Now, one thing that's really too, you know, important to, 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 to put into this is that this re- episode, I believe, was recorded on December the 4th. Um, and I'm recording this intro on December the 20th. Uh, as of uh, a few days ago, they have came out with a final tax bill, which has the final wording in it and the final agreements between most of the, uh, the House and the Senate in the, in the committee. There are some changes to this podcast episode. So this was a, this was a discussion about what could be occurring. A lot of the things we talk about do end up happening. Uh, so it's, it's still valuable to listen to. Um, but some of the final pieces of this, uh, you know, the legislation was that they did end up keeping what I said was good for dentists, um, or, you know, better for dentists, uh, which means they kept the different tax rates, seven tax rates with the, the highest tax rate actually going from 39.6% down to 37%. So Dr. Costas and I talk about that a little bit as well. Um, so this episode has already been posted by, uh, by Dr. Costas on his podcast and is being reposted with Dr. Costas's explicit permission. So I hope you guys enjoy. Let me know if you have any questions and have a great holiday guys. The Dentalpreneur Podcast. Okay, doctor, it's time to put down that handpiece. You're listening to the show dedicated to helping dentists get their lives back. It's time to decrease your stress, increase your profitability, and regain your passion. Now introducing your host, Dr. Mark Costas. Hey there, fellow dentalpreneurs. Thank you to all you veteran listeners out there who have been with us since episode number one and who have helped this to become one of the most listened to dental podcasts on the planet, now being broadcast in over 140 countries. And if you're a first time listener, welcome to the family. My goal is to bring you the most influential thought leaders in the dental profession and to bring you the very best free content to help you to continue to grow your dental enterprise. The best way to interact with this group is to join our closed Facebook group called the Dental Success Institute. Once a member, you can post questions, comments, and suggestions for future episodes and interact with our awesome community. Thanks again for all your support and look forward to seeing you at one of our upcoming live events and in the Dental Success Institute Facebook page. This episode is being sponsored in part by Divergent Dental. Divergent is my favorite new upstart dental company that I use for my automated business intelligent reports for all 10 of my dental practices. Keeping a close eye on multiple practices is difficult enough. And what I like about this service is that I receive a daily synopsis of performance metrics for each practice in a nice, easy to read report. In addition, we use it to send out the morning huddle and unscheduled treatment plan call list to our office managers to take action on a daily basis. Imagine your treatment plan acceptance percentages, your reappointment rate percentages, your attrition rate percentages. That's the number of people that fall out of your practice on a monthly basis. In addition to the basic reports like adjusted production, collections, new patients, accounts receivable reports sent to my email or your email, and to any key personnel that you choose. I can't imagine running my practices without this resource. Divergent Dental was created by the super smart and talented Kevin Rawson, who runs a dental practice just like you and me. So he understands how important it is to deliver accurate dental analytics in a super easy to read format. Nothing to log into, no training needed, at a super low price point. So go to DivergentDental.com for more information and to get your subscription going. You'll be glad you did. DivergentDental.com 
Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Dentalpreneur Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Mark Costas. Today, we have a very, very informative and great episode, I think, in line for you guys today. We've been getting flooded with a ton of questions about the Tax Cuts and Job Act that has gone through the House and now the Senate. And because of that, because I'm not qualified to speak on such topics, uh, I reached out to the, one of the people that I know is best versed in this universe, and that is CPA, Jonathan Van Horn. Jonathan um, is the founder of DentistMetrics.com. And just a little bit about Jonathan. Jonathan created de- Dentist Metrics to solve the problem facing many dentists. They have a complicated business, and their time is stretched way too thin. Most dentists spent 15,000 hours learning how to be a dentist, but zero hours learning how to be a business owner. Don't we all know that? So Dentist Metrics, uh, the aim of Dentist Metrics is to completely automate and outsource the bookkeeping, financial reporting, and tax portion of the dentist's business so that they can focus on what really matters in their practice. By creating an automated workflow for the dentist and focusing on showing dentists what numbers they need to be watching, Dentist Metrics has allowed dental practices around the country to raise profits by hundreds of thousands of dollars per year. So you guys can hear just in that brief bio why Jonathan and I get along so well. I mean, our missions line up so, so um, closely together that we have a lot in common. And when we get talking, boy, we can talk for a long time. So Jonathan, thank you so much for the short notice. I actually texted you at about four o'clock this morning, my time, because (laughs) um, I was reading this, uh, this article in Forbes about about this tax cuts and job act. And um, a lot of people are confused about about you know the ramifications to their businesses as a dental practice owner. So thank you so much for being here today. Man, anytime I find someone who is excited to talk about <laughs> tax reform and change and they want to get on the phone, I- I'm all for it, especially if it's in podcast form. So yeah. Oh absolutely. my gosh. Thank you so much. Um, I have this Forbes article right in front of me. I was wondering if we could just, they, they have you know these bullet points of what this, this, I guess basically an executive summary of the, of the Tax Cuts and Job Act. So I was wondering if I could just kind of go through the list and we can comment and you can tell me if there's any misconceptions that you've heard on any of these, on any of these topics. Perfect. And, you know, I'm, I'm happy to go over those and, uh, you know, using an article is a really good way of doing it because believe it or not, a lot of the articles I've been reading miss a lot of the really important parts. So I'm excited to talk to you about it. Awesome. Awesome. And, and, you know, this is, this is a Forbes article. So there might be people from both sides of the aisle that, that think that, you know, it was slanted in one direction or the other or an other. I want this to be a totally informational Nonpartisan discussion. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna share with you guys what my per- personal political um, leanings are at all. I'll try to keep that all out of this completely. This is strictly meant to be informational and for you guys to understand what the ramifications are moving forward for your um, profession as a dentist and a dental business owner. So here we go. So number one, the top individual tax rate will be dropping from 39.6 to 38.5%, which is what, just like 1.1%. And the threshold at which it kicks in is up from $418,000 as a single to $480,000 as a married couple to $500,000 as a single to a million dollars as a married couple. So um, I guess the tax rate is going to drop, but only a, a very small amount. Uh, but the the important thing is that they're they're bumping up the threshold to which that tax cut kicks in. So one one thing that's really important to note is, you know, the way that all of this works is we, we're recording this on December the 4th, 2017. Correct. And, as, and as of right now, the House has passed their version. It's passed the Senate Finance Committee and it's now passed in the Senate as well as of December the 4th. First, I believe, is whenever they late at night they 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 passed it in the Senate. Okay. What you're talking talking, <clears throat> excuse me. What you're referring to is the Senate version. Right. The Senate version and the House versions have some some. Well, they're they're somewhat similar. There are some very important differences, and one of the differences uh, right now is you know you're talking about the Senate version. Right. Um. The the way that the House kind of came up with it was you know. At the beginning of this whole thing, they kept talking about all these postcard tax returns and how simple all this was going to be. And 
smartly they've just they've stopped talking about that a little bit <laughs> because it's not going to uh, be that simple <laughs> <laughs> right like i don't i don't know like how stupid they thought the american public was that we were going to be able to just reduce the number of rates and that was going to all of a sudden allow us to you know just file everything on a postcard now but you know if, if you're if you're not if you're not familiar you know the the calculation of taxable income to taxes is one line on the tax return right. and reducing the number of rates the total quantity of rates has nothing to do with that complexity so um, the uh, House version had four tax rates, okay. and the top one of that one was 39.6%. Okay. Now, the Senate said, we're going to keep the current tax rates levels, but we're going to drop all those rates by a certain percentage. So the one you're talking about is dropping the top rate from 396 down to 385 which, yes, is a 1.1% decrease on taxable income uh, for that top tax bracket. Now, I don't um, want to go through a, a, down a rabbit hole, but this is for W-2 employees, correct? This is for everyone. So the way, so a really important distinction to make is that the way that taxable income, so there, there are some, there are some words that are, 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 I will try to make as simplistic as possible for everyone out there that's listening, because just like you guys probably in dentistry have all of your non-dental buddies come around and you probably just talk about dentistry all the time and, you know, about, you know, different procedures and things like that. And all of your dental friends are like, I have no idea what these guys are talking about. Yeah. Uh, I, I do the same with tax stuff, so I'm not, I, if, if I'm being too simplistic, I apologize. If I'm being uh, not simplistic enough, I also apologize. But the way that taxable income works is that taxable income uh, is generated by a few different categories of expenses and deductions. So the first category is just income, total income, which includes things like your W-2 income, maybe your interest in dividends, capital gains, maybe some uh, some rental income, expenses, any business income is included in there. And that's really the first category, so income. Um, from your income, you then take what are called adjustments to your income. So you'll then adjust down that total income. Mm -hmm. And once you take the adjustments away, you have what's called adjusted gross income. Right. Once you have your adjusted gross income, you then take your itemized deductions, which are your things like your home mortgage interest, which are your personal itemized deductions, and you subtract that from your AGI. And that generally would give you your taxable income. Now, you would under the old rules, also have exemptions that you would take out of there. Uh, and it also, if you didn't qualify for itemized deductions, you would use the standard deduction instead, which is a big thing that they're changing. Yeah, I'm going to get um, to that one. That's another one of it, these points for yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah ex exactly. So the, so the math, the way the math follows is total in, is income from all sources minus adjustments minus either itemized deductions or the standard deduction minus your exemptions equals your taxable income. And taxable income is what you pay your tax rate on. Got it. Not your total income. Got it. Okay. Yeah, I know I know so that 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 all, all I just talked about is, you know, hundreds of pages of tax returns. So well, I that I'm was that make, was a lot less uh, painless than uh, going through hundreds of pages of anything. Exactly. So, thank exactly. You. <laughs> thank so, you for so yes, clearing that up. So the tax rates only affect that taxable income. So Got they're it. effectively they're effectively lowering the tax rate on everyone's taxable income, which is great. And they're also shifting around some of those taxable uh, tax brackets of, of what total income is for certain types of people. So and in the Senate version, they're keeping most of the tax rates. So they're they're basically saying you're. you're Whatever your income tax bracket was last year, it's going to be the same, but we're going to reduce the rate. The House bill is saying we're just changing all of this stuff, and we're going to say there's going to be, I think it's like from zero to ninety thousand. It's like it's fifteen percent from ninety to two hundred and sixty thousand. This is for married filing jointly. From nine, ninety to two hundred and sixty thousand dollars, it's twenty five percent. From two hundred sixty thousand to a million dollars, it's um, thirty. It's uh, thirty-five percent, and a million dollars up, it's thirty-nine point six percent. That was the house version. Now, what so they what have happens to do, with the inconsistencies if both pass, which they will? They, so they did both pass. So yep. They did both pass. So what they do now is they go to. Uh, and again, I'm not like the most the the most legislatively. Uh, um, adept person that there is. But what they do is they go to a committee now and then they'll start reconciling the differences. Got it. 
Uh, and once they do that, then they'll both have to pass again on, under the, the changes. And at that point, we'll have new law. And my understanding is that they're trying to get this done in the next four weeks. Correct. The, they want it to be done before the first of the year uh, for multiple reasons, but you know the the biggest is typically for tax planning purposes. Sure. Uh, they want people to be able to plan for it, and this is you know the big inconsistency and a, a big confusion I've had a lot of questions on is when will this actually take place? Like, so if they t- change the law this year, does that mean it happens for 2017's taxes? No, everything currently is saying for tax years beginning after 2017. So the first year this would take effect and under both plans currently is 2018. So no, no. So, so don't worry about this year's stuff. Only worry about next year's stuff. And there are very, there, there are quite a few areas for tax planning that could, uh, that, that will be that this, you know, depending on what they, they end up with at the end of the line is, is going to be available to, to, uh, to savvy tax, uh, uh, users. So. Okay, cool. All right. This next one is something that I really need some clarification on and, I'm I'm guardedly excited, but uh, okay. you might have to to talk us all through this because this is gonna sure. this has sure. um, uh, relevance to a lot of people listening to this podcast, and that that is mm-hmm. top rate income earned by owners of flow through businesses, S corps or partnerships, is down from thirty nine point six percent to thirty j- just under thirty percent, and this is the Senate version as well. So again, top rate. Income earned by owners of flow through businesses, which are S corps or partnerships, is down from thirty nine point six percent to to just under thirty percent. Could you clarify that? Absolutely. So that was the one of the things they campaigned about why this was going to be the uh, like the the a small business tax cut because there are so many pass through entities that have uh, that type of a of a of a of, of a entity selection. So they have sure. a path through entity of either an S corp or a partnership or a single member LLC, whatever it may be. Uh, and those are all pass through income entities. So the way that that works is not to be too complex, but basically you have an entity where all the money goes into and all the expenses come out of and the money that's left over after you pay yourself your W2 wage, assumably in some of those and some of them you don't, I know that's going to be, I, I might lose a few of you there, but, uh, everything that's left over pl- flows through to your personal tax return. So when we were talking about income, you know, you might have some W2s, you might not depending on your income and you also would have business income, which would be this, these flow through uh, entities. Now, everyone thought that was going to be a big tax cut and a big boom to most small business owners. Uh, unfortunately, there is a provision in there that says, states that service people that have their income be generated mostly by service industries uh, <laughs> is excluded from that lower rate. Awesome. So, and there's a very calm, calm, so it's one of those things you can't really see it until everything's done with it. So I, I, it sounded like a too good to be true type thing. I was very, 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 very uh, skeptical that that was going to make it through. Um, but they did keep it in there, but they only kept it in there to make sure that it didn't qualify for people who actually did a service out of the company. Inclu- but dentists including are, Dennis, we're de- service. So are you. Yeah. You're a CPA. Yeah, exactly. So are attorneys. Dentists, financial advisors, medical. So basically anybody that does anything for somebody else that is not so – like um, manufacturers would be would be someone, May, maybe construction people, and laws, and laws is not management of construction, um, uh, you know, real estate entities, things like that. Those would be able to have that better rate, but maybe not, but but definitely not the service companies. So that doesn't mean anything to us, Dennis. Everything's staying basically the same for us and our pass through entities. For, for the vast, vast, vast majority of dentists, it doesn't make any difference. It's not going to make be any change to you. You you you'll you'll not get to partake in that party. Um, but, I was really excited when I read it initially too, yeah, well, until I saw that well, um, the 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 fine print. Yeah, well, for someone for someone uh, like like yourself, if you if you are one of those doctors that's very entrepreneurial and you have multiple entities, you have multiple businesses, some of the businesses will probably qualify, some may not. It just depends on you know the the the, the personal details of those items. So, for example, if you're a, an investor in a company that you are not a um, participating much in, um, that one may actually be able to, to qualify for it if you're if you're not actually an active participant in that company. Sure. So. Sure. So yeah, so there's, there are chances behind to, to get some of the, the benefit, but it's, it, it's somewhat convoluted. So, um, and then the, the, the Senate and the house d- do have some differences in that, but under the current, you know, 
the, what we're predicting, uh, Dennis shouldn't be counting any chickens on this one. Yeah, I'm sure our our great friend Dr. Paul Gosar, who sits on uh, he's a who's a sitting congressman here for Arizona, also a dentist. I'm sure he had something to say about that. But uh, one lone voice isn't enough to I guess <laughs> to to make a difference. But uh, that's kind, I'm, of I'm wait, I'm, kind of a bummer. I'm waiting to hear him on the Dental Printer podcast to see why he didn't why he didn't fight harder for it. You know, it's funny. We ended up at a cocktail party together last year, and he said that he'd be happy to come on. So this might be a great time to to have him on and uh, discuss with him why um, they excluded service providers, including dentists. Kind of a bummer. Mm. All right, here we go. Next one. Are you ready? Sure. So you alluded to the standard standard deduction. So the standard deduction will be doubled from sixty three hundred and fifty dollars for a single person to twelve thousand seven hundred dollars if married, um, to twelve thousand and twenty four thousand respectively. So, um, can you explain the standard deduction? This probably won't um, have too much bearing on most of the people listening to this podcast. Yeah. So basically, what the government says is, um, and, and basically what the government says is like, hey, uh, if you're a U.S. taxpayer and you have income, we're going to give you a gimme. We're going to automatically give you some write-off to your income, uh, regardless of if you have anything to write off. So they give you a, the standard deduction to do that for you know for single people, like you said, it was six thousand three hundred and fifty dollars. For married people, it's something like twelve thousand six hundred dollars, twelve thousand something like that. Um, and they would allow you to take that as a freebie. Uh, and now, the way the math works is that um, you have to choose one or the other. You can either get the standard deduction, or if you have enough, you can itemize your deductions. And so your itemized deductions are typically medical expenses if you qualify it's it's this is most people don't get to do this one because it's subject to 10 percent of your agi remember that number i said you know income minus adjustments equal agi mm -hmm. you would have to have more than 10 percent of your agi uh going out as medical expenses in a year in order to get any deductions on that but that would be one mm -hmm. the next one would be uh state and local income taxes real estate taxes pro personal property taxes or itemized deductions so if you withhold money from your w-2 for state income taxes you're in a state that has income taxes that's a write-off um you also have, if you pay in estimates to a state uh, for your income taxes, that is a write-off. Um, all that, that uh, if you have any um, uh, mortgage interest uh, for your mortgage, for your personal residence, or from a secondary uh, uh, residence, that's a write-off. Uh, if you have any investment interest, that's a write-off. And then there's an area called miscellaneous deductions, which is a whole bunch of other areas of, of deductions. So things like home office deduction, um, unreimbursed employee expenses, um, you know, uh, margin interest on financial trading accounts uh, is a miscellaneous deduction. Uh, there's a lot of things that come up in the itemized deductions list, which again, just to recap what we said earlier, it's income, total income minus adjustments equals AGI, AGI minus itemized deductions minus exemptions equals taxable income. So we're talking about that itemized deductions area right now. And there's a lot of changes that they're putting in to the itemized deductions. So, so they're, they're eliminating the ability for you to write off a lot of the things that were write offable before, like state and local income tax, um, and certain other things that we were used to being able to deduct. Now you can no longer deduct those. However, they increased the standard deduction. So that is their attempt. I'm asking, not, not stating, but I'm asking, is that their attempt at making um, this, I guess, tax calculation and tax preparation much simpler? You know it is, but the funny thing is, is that 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 that's one page of the tax return um, that we're talking about here, and it's literally you know right. like five different sections and one line on each of them. So they are re removing a lot of items, but it creates a lot of confusion in the marketplace. Um, so the 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 thing I'll just kind of go through a laundry list of the things we're deducting that is relevant to most of the people on, that are listening right now. Yep. So if you're in a state that has income taxes. Um, which, you know, a, a lot of them do, uh, Arkansas and Arizona included, uh, are, you know, they, you don't get a write-off for that anymore. So if you think about the math equation I was talking about before, you know, the, this, the, the negative number in that math equation is going to be a smaller negative number now um, because of the fact that you can't write it off. And if you think about how that affects it from a math basis, that means your taxable income will go up because of that. 
Mm -hmm. Um, Now, Mm -hmm. the people that is an exception to this are the people that uh, were just not itemizing beforehand. So if you, for example, you didn't have a mortgage and uh, maybe you're in a state that doesn't have state income taxes, um, maybe you didn't have a whole lot in real estate and property taxes, maybe you, you rented your own apartment or something like that, you may be fine. You may be, you may be better. Off. It may not be much of an adjustment to your income, but there's a lot of people that these things, these different items will affect. So um, as I go through these, I kind of talk to the people that are going to be affected by these things. So state and local income taxes, if you're in a state that has state and local income taxes, you're heavily affected by it. So uh, if you're in a state that has a high state income tax rate, it's going to raise your taxable income by quite a bit. Mm-hmm. Um, the you know local taxes, you know areas like Ohio that have um, you know a state tax, a, a county tax, a city tax, a school tax, all those things they're just no longer deductible. So your taxable income, as the as that deduction goes away, in ta- your taxable income will go up. And again, there's a floor of this of the twenty twenty four thousand dollars if you're married, twelve thousand if you're single, whatever the, right. the exact yep. numbers are. That's what it's saying. Um, yep. So. That's that's the first one that's being that's being just completely eliminated, and that is in, um, I believe that is in both of the of, of the of the of the of the of the bills currently out there. So I, I do foresee that occurring. Um, the second tax that they're taking away as a deduction, real estate and property taxes. They're going to for the Senate or sorry the House bill, they had it capped at ten thousand dollars a year. Is all you can. Is all you can uh, deduct. So if you're now, over is, ten thousand, this is interest on mortgages, right? That that are no, taxed no, 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 in no, real estate. No, no, no. no that, well, I'll get to that one in a second. This okay. is actual real estate taxes. So if you own a house, oh, oh, oh and you're, yes, okay, gotcha. Yeah, if you own a house or a piece of land or something like that that's not a business use property, okay. and you're paying real estate taxes for it, um, if you pay more than ten thousand dollars a year for any type of real estate that you own, you no longer you only get up to ten thousand dollars. That sucks. On, on the real estate. Yeah. So people that really affects, if you're in one of those states that do not have state income taxes, then you're typically in a state that has high property taxes. Right. Now, it, you know, most of the people that are in those states like you know Texas and Florida and things like that, they're probably thinking, you know, I probably don't spend 10 grand a year on that stuff. That's great. But if you own multiple houses or something like that, not great because – if they're personal houses, um, because then you won't get that. You you will be capped for your deduction. Yeah, I was going to say. I mean, for those people that actually do have state income tax uh, and have maybe a reasonable real estate tax, but have multiple properties, you can easily get over ten thousand dollars. Very very easily get over ten thousand dollars in in real estate tax for multiple right. properties if you accumulate right. now, that. Now, as long as if they're like rental properties or something like that that you're recognizing income against, mm-hmm. from from what I can tell, those are, you're you're still okay with those. Like, you'll still get the deductions from those. Got it. It's just if you happen to have multiple personal residences. So the next thing that gets cut off, if you have multiple residences, if you oh, have my, multiple, my head's multiple spinning already, dude. We're only yeah. on number six here, and my head's spinning. I know, Go ahead. I know, man. <laughs> it, there's so there's so much. Uh, oh. The so if you own in in the past. If you had a second residence, you could deduct your mortgage interest on it. So, for example, I've got clients that have a family member who uh, they, they own the, their house and they pay the mortgage for them. I have people that have lake houses. I have people that have vacation houses, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. That's just gone. So no, no more of that. You don't get, you don't get a, a, d- a deduction on your mortgage interest for that anymore. So mm-hmm. that's gone. So if, if that applies to you, your taxable income is going to go up by however much that interest was every year. Got it. Um, you, you can still deduct the real estate taxes for it as long as your total sum is not more than $10,000. So that's another thing. The next one, uh, home mortgage interest. Um, the way that it was, bef- so these, th- there are some differences uh, in the Senate and House on this one, but uh, long story short, in the past, you could have up to a million dollars in home mortgage interest mm-hmm. and you can deduct the interest on that on your, on your, on your, as an itemized deduction. So if the uh, total the, if the total amount of the mortgage is up to a million dollars, you can deduct the interest on that. Correct. Okay. And in the and in the house bill, they said we're going to change that for any new loans. So that's really important. Any new loans, old loans, or grandfathered in, um, the the limit is on is five hundred thousand dollars. 
So if you are going to buy a house in an area that is more than $500,000, which in a lot of areas of the country, you know, that's, that's not, that, that's a, that's a pretty big house, but in some areas of the country, that's a very small, tiny house. Right. Um, and you know, if you're above that, then you just wouldn't get a mortgage interest deduction allocably de- de- between the amount that you were spending. So for example, if you bought a, a $750,000 house, um, you'd get two thirds of your interest deduction because 500 divided by 750 is two thirds. So that's, that's under the House bill. Under the Senate bill, they're keeping the million-dollar number in, but they're getting rid of home equity line of credit interest deductions. Got it. So you used to be able to take out a home equity line of credit on your house to do improvements or whatever you needed to do, and you could have a write-off for that as well. Uh, under the, under, the, under the, the, the Senate bill, they just that's what they eliminate rather than moving the number down. So. <sighs> Okay, got it. So that's a pretty important one. Um, under yeah. the under the House bill, they got rid of all those things I was talking about, miscellaneous deductions. Just the entire line, miscellaneous deductions, is just gone, which could be bad for a lot of people um, if you're not doing things correctly. If you have an S corp that's not reimbursing you for your, so like for example, if you as an as, as an owner of a company pay something on accident on personally. And then um, for your business and you don't reimburse yourself in the correct way and you ever get audited and you took a deduction for that, then the government may come back and tell you that that was not a reimbursable item because it was not because it wasn't set up the correct way. Mm -hmm. And you could lose the deduction on your business for that if you were to do it that way. So that that is a, a very nuanced one. But that is that will affect some people, um, and then all the other things. If you re- rewind back to when I was talking about the miscellaneous itemized deductions, those are eliminated in the Senate bill. They didn't just eliminate all of them; they did eliminate quite a few of them, such as the the home mortgage deduction um, and, and a few other ones. Let's see. Uh, uh, so they kept they kept the ones that were they they said were for the production of income, which would be things like. IRA, custodian fees, margin interest, and investment advice expenses, those would still be miscellaneous deductions that you could take on the tax return. Got it. Okay. All right. That makes sense. Hello, my dentalpreneur friends. This episode is being brought to you by the sixth annual Dental Success Summit being held in Scottsdale, Arizona at the JW Marriott Desert Ridge. Now, since the birth of the Dental Success Institute, we've hosted over 30 live events in three countries and all over the United States. But I've never been more excited about an event or a venue than I am about this year's Dental Success Summit. This place is first class all the way. Come on out, bring your whole family, enjoy world-class golf, catch a Major League Baseball spring training game, enjoy a cocktail by the pool or the lazy river, or just bask in the sun. The average temperature is 84 degrees this time of year. Remember, this event has sold out for four years in a row. And last year, over two dozen people showed up at the door after the sellout. So don't be shut out of the event this year. Register today. 14 CE units, a world-class venue, the best speakers lineup that we've ever had, and the opportunity to connect with success-minded, ambitious dentists from all over the planet. What more could you ask for? Just visit Dental Success summit.com so don't miss your chance to come out and watch one of the coolest speakers lineups of the year okay so estate tax exemption is doubled to 11 million dollars for a single taxpayer and 22 million dollar for uh, 22 million dollars for the married taxpayers i don't even know what that has to do with any of us but what can you explain that one <laughs> Yeah, so basically the uh, the government says, and I'll make this this brief. There is a thing called the estate tax. If you die, then you're supposed you pay taxes on whatever you leave behind. The thing is, is the government gives you a freebie and says for the first, if you're married, for the first 11 million bucks in your estate, you don't pay any taxes. Your inherit your descendants don't pay any taxes on it. Got it. Um, at, at last, uh, I was in a, a recent tax uh, CE event. And they said last year there were there were five thousand five hundred people that paid tax estate tax last year. So there's you know out of you know however many thirty three hundred million whatever it is how many people live in the U S. Uh, five thousand actually had that estate tax occur to them. So okay. very small number. Um, yeah. So they're so so they're doubling that 
for so even fewer people will have it under the Senate bill, under the House bill, they just eliminate it. I believe, if I remember correctly, the estate tax completely. Yes, gotcha. Okay, thank you. Um, all right, this one I just don't understand. So I'm hoping that you can shed some light on this one. The corporate tax rate reduced from 35 to 20 percent. So corporate. What does that mean? If we own our own LLC, if we own our own S corp, I know that's a pass through entity. Um, what's the difference here? What, what um, justifies us falling so what, under this corporate tax rate? So what they're talking about is, the, is, is an entity type called a C corp. It's yep. actually its own different type of, of entity. Which I have now, one LLC. Of those. I got yeah. one of those. I got some S corps and I got a C corp. So this this. Yep. Okay. Go ahead. So, so the entity, so an LLC can tre- be treated as a C corp as well. That that is an election you can make. It's just really rare in dentistry that that ever happens. Um, really, C corps. Uh, this doesn't affect very many dentists. It does create the potential planning idea of having people become C corps instead of S corps to get that lower rate. Mm-hmm. However, in C corps, and a lot of us have probably heard about this, there is the danger of something called double taxation. Right. Because the way C corps work is that you have all, and again, I, I gave you the definition for personal taxes. Forget about that when I talk about C corps, because the way the C corps work is they're completely separate. You don't do anything on your 1040 that's related to C corps unless you do certain things inside of the C corp. Right. So in the C corp, you have your income, your business income, you have your business expenses, and you have your net profit, right? Well, that profit is then taxed at a C-Corp level. That's what they're talking about here. So let's use an example of a dental practice, million dollars in revenue, half a million dollars in expenses. Um, they've got, well, let's say a million dollars in revenue and $950,000 in expenses. So they come as a very small tax rate. So they've got $50,000 in income left over in that C-Corp, right? That C-Corp would then take uh, I believe under the new one, that would be a 0% tax rate, actually, if I, if I remember correctly. Um, okay. So they pay, they pay uh, zero taxes on that. Well, the problem is, is now they've got to get that, mo- you gotta get that money out of the C-Corp. Right. And remember, your personal returns haven't been touched yet. So now you've got to get that money out. How do you get it out? Well, if you pull the money out, that is something called a dividend. And if you pull it out too soon, then it's called an ordinary dividend. And if you take an ordinary dividend, you get taxed at your normal tax rates. So what have you accomplished by taking a dividend? <laughs> Absolutely nothing. So yeah. if you if we take the second example of saying, okay, million dollars in revenue, and it was you know a half a million dollars in profit, and we said it was a 20% tax rate, let's assume that was the effective tax rate. Let's not assume that it was graduated you know, levels and things like that. That means that on a half a million bucks in revenue or in, in net income, that C corp would have twenty percent would be a hundred thousand dollars in taxes. Great, that sounds a lot less than you know forty percent, which would be you know what two hundred or two hundred thousand or wait forty percent times five would be two hundred. So yeah, no, and twenty percent yeah. So that's that's how that math works. Uh, you, you get you get me on on a short notice, and my 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 my, my head math gets fuzzy. <laughs> so so you 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 think you've saved some money, but the problem is is now. Okay, you pay the taxes out of the C corp. Well, how do you get the money out of the C corp? Because you remember, it, you, that's not your money. That's the C corp's money. Yeah, you got to pull so, it out. So you got to pull out as a dividend. It's a dividend, right? Yeah, and so, so you get you taxed pull, again. Exactly. So you have to now you have to pay. And if you do it too soon, you have to pay your ordinary tax rate, which would be forty percent. So now you've got three hundred. You got four hundred thousand dollars. You got to pull out because you paid a hundred thousand in taxes on the five hundred thousand, and you're going to pay forty percent on. The uh, on the four hundred thousand that you pull out, which would be an extra hundred and sixty thousand on the forty on the four hundred thousand. So now you pay two hundred sixty thousand dollars out of five hundred thousand dollars in profit, which is fifty two percent. So you know it, you, you've got to. The only way that works from a tax planning perspective is if you are okay with leaving money in that C corp, leaving the cash in the coffers of the C corp for a long period of time and then doing a qualified dividend, which would be at a lower capital gain tax or a lower capital tax rate. Uh, and it's very specific on how you have to do that. So not a lot of people can be as disciplined enough to be able to do that. And under the current environment, the tax rates are fairly similar. So it doesn't even make sense to do it that way. But under the new one, if it it is a 20% tax rate, you could make an argument if you can keep it in there long enough to be a qualified dividend, which is two different things. Qualified and ordinary dividends are two different things. Uh, they're taxed separ- differently. Then you could potentially make that a tax planning point to have with your CPA and you need to talk to your CPA about doing that. Okay. 
Gosh. That's is, a big this, confusion. Yeah, yeah big you confusion. know, when you initially read all these things, they all sound great, but the fine print really kind of bums me out quite a bit. Well, well, I mean, there, there, there's always going to be, there's always going to be positives around it. So there's yeah. always going to be positives that, that go along with it too. So it doesn't really affect very many people. Um, it just really gives you the, you know, you could plan into that being a potentially a, a marginally better circumstance. Right. Okay. Okay. This is going to be the last one. Let's see. Oh, I did want to ask you the difference in international tax regime, but I'm going to ask you this one. And then, um, and, and then one more after that, Businesses okay. will be able to immediately expense many asset purchases after five years of 100%. See, this is what I didn't understand was any different than what we were doing right now. Uh, yeah. Expensing the rate will, be, will phase out to 80%, 60%, 40%, 20% over a four-year period of time. So I thought that's the way that we were doing it now, like the, the Section 179, correct? We, we can expense over yeah. five years, correct? Exactly. Well, 179 is done over one year. Um, depreciation is done over, over multiple years, but they're changing it to where the the limit is. So the current limit of 179 is 500,000. They're increasing that limit to 5 million. Okay. Um, so I'll be honest, I don't know very many dentists that go over the fi- I, Actually, I'll, I'll say empirically, uh, I have z- had zero clients use a $500,000 179 expense uh, in the last five years. Uh, and the reason is, is that 179 only is qualified for uh, you know, business assets. Um, it doesn't qualify for real estate. So if you buy real estate, you can't 179 real estate. Right. And that's where most of the big expenses come from. Okay, guys, uh, hold so on a second. Time out. Jonathan is not, this is not, he's not issuing a challenge. So <laughs> no, <laughs> he doesn't no. want you to go out and, and buy, oh, buy three Cerex, Cerex machines, two microscopes and, uh, and a CT scanner. That's not what he's saying. He's just yeah. saying that, that's a lot of uh, business expenditures, ex- ex- excluding real estate. So go ahead. I'm sorry. There are so many equipment reps that are shooting off guns, <laughs> like, uh, like bang, 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 yeah, you know, yeah, more more 179 that I can sell people on. Yeah, it's yep. really funny whenever I uh, I'm looking through all the dental threads uh, of seeing people talking about things, and and there, there's always that one guy that's like, what about the 179 extension? And then I click on their I click on their uh, their their profile, and 100 percent of the time they are someone that is selling a pe- a big heavy expensive piece of equipment yeah. in one way or the other. Yeah. I'm just like, okay, that, that I could, I, I, I should have made a bet on that. So, so yeah. Um, so the, the, the house bill was moving it to 5 million. The ha- the Senate bill is uh, a million is what they're moving it up to. So, okay. you know, not, 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 not too, too, too big of a difference. Um, now the thing when you, you were talking about, um, was you were talking about, uh, a bonus depreciation, which is fairly, it, it's basically the same as 179. It's treated a little bit differently on the tax code side of things. And it's not 179 bonus depreciation. So it's, it's like the whole, like, you know, a, 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 a rectangle is a square, but a square isn't a rectangle type thing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, 179 is bonus depreciation, but bonus depreciation is not 179. Um, so they did change a few of that stuff that's not really, they basically expanded the definition of qualified property inside of that to include some, you know, things that no one's going to ever pay attention to, which is things like uh, television and live theater uh, productions and, you know, productions, place and service after September 27th, 2017 and before January 1st, 2023. Now, I have a feeling like there's some senator from some place that has some type of a, uh, of a, of a interest in something that happened after September 27th, 2017, yeah. uh, for that. Cause that is, it's a really weird date to be put into there. Um, but anyway, so yeah, that, that's one of the, that, that is something that's in there, but it's just a little bit different. Now, if you own any residential rental property, that is a depreciation thing that's, that they're trying to change right now. It's like 39 years for depreciating a rental oh, property. Correct. Yes. I did see that yeah. part. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They're trying to move that down to 30 years. So that's actually a, a boom for, for some people. Okay. Yeah, which you know it's a little bit. It's it's nice. It's not. It's not gonna. You know, we're not gonna be uh, uh, sipping mai tais in the Hamptons after that, uh, or Long Island iced teas, I guess, in the, in the Hamptons right. for that one piece of change. But it it is something that helps. Okay, gotcha. And then this is just for general, uh, for general information. I was just interested what it meant. So the inter- in, the international tax regime is completely revamped, shifting from a deferred system to a territorial system. Can you just tell us mm-hmm. just really briefly, I don't know if anybody else is as interested in I am about, uh, about this international tax regime, but let us know about that. If you, if you happen to know. 
Yeah, so I'm not the, like the expert in international tax. I've done some uh, back whenever I was doing, you know, managing other CPA firms. Uh, but in the turn, in, in in the way that it effectively is, is that um, if it's it, right now, it depends on where it is that you're doing the business that qualifies you for taxes. And they're going to change that to be basically, you know, wherever the um, you know, and a lot of people define that. Like for example, Apple is famous for having like a six billion dollars or something like that sitting in a irish bank account somewhere or something like that mm-hmm. um and that that's because there's supposedly doing business out of that area um they're going to allow those companies to bring that money back in at a very low tax rate as a way to repatriate oh, that gotcha. that taxes and this gives the gives them w- the way to do that so they can get bring that money offshores back into our banks here and then also by lowering the corporate tax rate, it allows them to be competitive with those other countries to say, look, you know, you're, yes, you pay 20 percent, but it's not, you know, you know, whatever you're, is you're having to pay over there. And even if you were over there, it would still be taxed here under the new laws. OK, I guess that leads to my next question is so the corporate tax rate going from 35 percent to 20 percent that then it sounds to me like it affects larger companies. So larger companies. Um, are more um, usually use the C corp um, entity structure more yes. than smaller businesses. A hundred percent. So uh, okay, there was gotcha. a there, someone posted a picture. It was Mitch McConnell in front of like a banner that said something like the um, the 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 tax cuts for small business. And I, and I made a joke on the on the on the on the picture that said I feel like there should be an asterisk by the word small business, and then it should say at the bottom under that asterisk um, for for companies with. Uh, $50 million in revenue and up. Uh, because, <laughs> you know, that's really, that is, to me, that is the single biggest piece of legislation in this. Um, that, yeah, they're I mean, helping out really, really big business. Um, exactly. Helping them and, to move their money back in without getting clobbered tax wise, making it more um, friendly for them to do business in the United States and bring their, their, manufacturing facilities, et cetera, back to the United States and decreases their corporate tax rate. Which exactly. Is, which is all- funny that they call it for small businesses. The small small exactly. business tax it, cuts, that, that, that's just... Smoke and mirrors. Totally, and mirrors. totally, totally, total misnomer. Uh, yeah. Yeah, go so, ahead. Yeah, so, so it also does some other really cool things. Like if, you, if you're lowering a tax, uh, a tax rate, um, and I'm not going to get into economic theory any here, but, you know, assumably... If you are a, a C corp that is a is a big company, you know you hope that some of that money will be passed on to the shareholders in the form yes. of dividends or in the form of uh, increased uh, capital gains. Right. So um, now, if the company just says, "Oh, great, I'm just going to give the CEO a lot more money," then everyone's just worse off, right? But assumably, that also gives some more wiggle room for that that company to be able to. You know, use those funds to be able to take, um, you know, deductions and and buy, you know, hire people and things like that. That is what they're saying is going to happen, but it's just way too convoluted for the American public to really understand that. Yeah. Um, you know, most people aren't business owners, and most people don't understand that 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 could be a byproduct of what occurs. Is it going to happen? I don't know. We'll see. Some theorists say yes. Some people say heck no. Um, but we'll we'll see. I guess so. That. That's the biggest, to me, that is the single biggest thing. And, um, and you and I talked about this earlier, but they do, you know, all the individual stuff that we just talked about, that all under the Senate bill phases out in 2025. All the C Corp stuff stays on pretty much for, it, it does not have a, have a, have a window closed at any point in time under the current legislation. Okay. So you're saying that I have to cancel my trip to the Bahamas for three, the first three months of the year, because um, it's not going to affect my tax rate that much. <laughs> yeah, it's not. It's not going to happen yet. You can't retire uh, just because because everyone's only you know you're going to have an extra hundred grand because you, you you pay that much less in taxes this year. So you know, just as kind of a, a general thing, you know, and again, I'm really interested in seeing how this shakes out because the House bill, like the whole thing with the four tax rates, that was to be honest, it was kind of dumb. Like it didn't it didn't make any sense the way the math rolled out. Like I said, you know, the, the math, the, the simple equation we talked about of income minus adjustments minus high minus deductions uh, minus exemptions equals taxable income. Mm-hmm. One really important thing is um, under both of these, there's no more exemptions. So you used to get an exemption 
for yourself, your spouse, and each of your kids. And each that each person was four thousand and fifty dollars mm-hmm. of of write offs subtractions to, before you got to that taxable income. Now, right. if you made a, if you made like over you know four hundred thousand dollars, then your exemption started phasing out anyways. But they're just completely eliminating those now. Um, so, but the, what happened was is by doing that. In the way that the house changed the tax numbers to try and simplify it, uh, it moved the 35% tax bracket for married filing joint people from $430,000 a year down to $260,000 a year. Mm. So a big, big increase for the people at 260. Yeah. Um, and that, and if you think about the way the automatic deductions were hit as well, who's you know that that hits a lot of doctors and dentists in that 260 to 450, 430 range. Oh, yeah. As, that's that's as, gotta be a huge percentage of healthcare yeah. providers. Yeah. And then you've got the way the math works, the way I figured it out was I created all these really fancy tables and this big Excel file to try and figure out how to, you know, quantify what's happening. And the easiest way for me to be able to illustrate that to people is just to say, if your taxable income goes up by a certain number, dep- it, it depending on where your taxable income was, then you're worse or better off. So in that 260 to 430 range, I saw that if your taxable income went up by somewhere around twenty to twenty five thousand dollars, you were wor- you were worse off than before. So all the things we've talked about today about the the things you're losing from itemized deductions, as well as what you're losing from your exemptions, you're going to be worse off. And not like you're going to be all of a sudden a, a pauper on the street, but you will pay in more in taxes. So, you know, if you're, you know, a person that was paying, you know, that was, uh, you know, say $350,000 a year in total taxable income and your taxable income went up by $40,000, um, then you might be worse off by about five grand a year or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and that $35,000 would have to be the sum of, you know, state income taxes, property taxes, uh, exemptions, which again, if you had a family of four, that was sixteen thousand two hundred dollars just off of that alone. Yeah. Uh, so there's a lot I, of people. I, that I, I claw tooth and nail at the end of the year to find you know sixteen thousand dollar deduction. Oh yeah. But an oh, exemption. Yeah. I mean, that's that's straight off your that's straight off your adjusted gross income. That's that's going to sting. Yeah. Exactly. So. There's to me, it's like there's like a donut of that 260 to 430 range that a lot of people get really hard because a lot of doctors have that income range and a lot of them have state income taxes that are fairly significant. So, for example, if you're most a lot of states like Arizona is fairly similar to Arkansas, it's right at seven yeah. percent of state uh, state income taxes. So, if you're making you know say three hundred thousand dollars a year in uh, Arizona or Arkansas, you're paying twenty one thousand dollars a year in state income taxes. Well, if that's gone, you've already hit your, your, you're almost at your total load now. Now, there is a positive. They are getting rid of the AMT tax, which does affect a certain segment of taxpayers. But even people that pay ta- you know, state income taxes, um, they don't always get hit with AMT. So it's some people it does, some people it doesn't. You'd have to go. It's really complicated to be able to figure that, that, that piece of it out. But um, the state income tax one is the biggest one. People hurt the absolute most. If you're listening in, listening in from California or New York, you're in a state that has really high state income taxes, and you're in a state that has really high property taxes, uh, and you're also in a state that has really high home cost. Those two states get hit absolutely the hardest with this. And California um, already, because and New York, because of what you just mentioned, are so are taxed so highly compared to the rest of the country. And I know this because I own I own businesses in California. Um, exactly, it's it's yeah. this is going to be significant for people um, in the left and the right coasts mm-hmm. for sure. Yep. So, so if you're if you're in that range of two hundred and sixty to four hundred and thirty, you're really, 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 really pulling for the Senate version of this, right? Um, everything else is fairly fairly the same. I really hope that the House has had enough because there was quite a bit. A lot of people had backlash, but the problem with this is that, like you said, you read an article of, of, of like seven things. Uh, there's there's literally hundreds more of things that affect different people. And like an article that you read on the internet, a lot of the times it can't cover all of it. Yeah. And it also can't cover all the situations that are incurred inside of that that situation. Yep. And there's a lot of confusion on it because taxes are just inherently confusing that a lot of people just don't know what's going on. So they're just like, oh, I guess the 
let's see where we shake out. It is what it is. But I mean, I'm, I'm telling you guys, call your if you have a if you have a house, uh, uh, someone whoever's in the house in your district, call them and tell them if you're going to change. If you do one thing off of this podcast episode, call them and tell them that you want to keep the current tax rates that you're not an idiot and you don't and you realize that four tax rates makes no difference to the complexity of the tax code and that the four tax rates that they uh, have proposed hurt middle income tax middle the, the middle america incomes greatly now i know i know everybody's saying 000. 260 to 450 is not middle class but oh it, it's t- i mean it, it t- for for you guys i mean if you've got Five hundred thousand dollars in student loan debt that you're not going to take as a deduction one way or the other. Yep. You're paying, you know, four grand a month on that. I mean, then you've got all the extra burdens of your practice and everything else is going on, man. That's that money is that two sixty goes away real quick, um, and especially in today's environment. Now, another big one we didn't talk about that's obviously really big. The Senate has the repeal of the American uh, 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 Affordability ACA, whatever whatever it is, American Coverage Act, or whatever it is. Um, that's that's a big deal. <laughs> uh, basically, gets rid of the uh, government mandate on health insurance. Uh, yeah. The House does not. That's probably the biggest thing they've got to reconcile between the two. Um, but the how if you're if you're if you're gonna take action off of call today, that is gonna affect a ton of dentists to where a lot of the burden gets put on. It's really weird. It's a really weird tax change in the House version because the way the math works is like if you're like zero to sixty thousand dollars, you're you're better off. If you're like 60 to 260, it's basically neutral. 260 to 450, you're the worst. If you're 450 up, you're good. Like it, you're typically good. Like when you get to a million dollars in revenue and in income, sorry, taxable income, the number, the, the delta on the itemized deductions has to be about $75,000 in order for you to be worse off. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, it, it, so it, it becomes easier, and it stays with the math works. It actually stays at that number uh, up until infinity, basically. Yeah. So, so I am I'm very aware of the income situation for a hundred of my clients and myself personally and my partners. So I have I I have the scenarios um, in my head, and the vast majority of the people that I know and that I work with in in my sphere of influence. Um, are going to be very affected if if the house bill passed mm-hmm. uh, if, it, yep. if it if it if it skews towards the house side not the senate yes so if you if you do anything to say look no no one's falling for the fact that you have four tax rates that, and it's easier we know it's not just use the senate's version it's a flat across the board tax cut it doesn't make the math be dumb for certain people like that donut hole of 260 to 430 people yeah. uh, which is if it doesn't affect you it may in the future and it definitely affects a lot of your colleagues <sighs> okay thanks man <laughs> yeah right. hey I, I i know i know everyone's like probably sipping a pina colada right now like that was <laughs> smoking a cigar like that was satisfying that, that was, was the best podcast i've ever listened to <laughs> yeah. i mean <laughs> Josh goes from a, a nice arkansas man and a nice guy from arizona <laughs> <laughs> Great awesome. stuff. Great stuff. Love it. Love it. All right, Jonathan. Thank you so much for your time, man. I got, I got you out of here just in the nick of time for your hard end. Um, I really got to I really gotta take my hat off to you for, for doing your research and, and being so well-versed in this stuff. Um, the sky is not falling, guys. It's not the end of the world. Um, we still have to kind of now, I guess, uh, is a good time to start paying attention to what happens in the next three and a half to four weeks to see which version um, this actually ends up skewing towards. And, and we're hoping for anybody making between 260 and 450 uh, per year, we're, we're, we're hoping that it goes more towards the Senate version and, and rather than the House version. One thing really important, that real quick, that I didn't mention that is going away that you guys will need to know about. If you have a CEREC Section 199 Domestic Gross Production Activity Deduction, um, Form 8903 on your tax return, I think, uh, that's going away. So you won't. So if you have an in-house lab, you used to get a special deduction that was supposed to be that was put in there from the Bush tax cuts uh, mm-hmm. to incentivize uh, American manufacturing. Right. Uh, that will go. That will go away. So that is another piece that if you have that, that, you know, plan on that being an additional raise to that, that is an, that in that that's called a deduction, 
but it ends up being an adjustment on your personal tax return. I know that's a little confusing. Um, and But if you have that currently, which you'd find that on the first page of 1040, down in the adjustments area, there'd be one called the domestic gross production activity uh, deduction. Uh, and then you would you would just, that would be an increase to your income for whatever that would be if you're trying to figure all this out on your own. Whew. Okay, good stuff. I'm sorry for you, all you SARAC and E4D people. Um, mm-hmm. That has been something that's been a selling point for the reps for a long time. Those, and, that, 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 that equipment rev with those guns, he's, 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 he, they're down to the ground now. He's, he's got his head hanging low. <laughs> <laughs> that's a great visual. That's a great visual. <laughs> All right, man. And, and hey, listen, guys, there's been a lot of chatter on the Dental Success Institute Facebook group about people looking for a good qualified CPA. Um, I was reluctant to, to hand his name out because um, I didn't know if uh, Jonathan's firm was going to be able to handle the influx of new clients. Um, turns out that they're hiring some new CPAs for the firm that you're going from. How many, how many CPAs do you have now, Jonathan? Uh, we have three CPAs currently. we we just hired another one today and we have uh, uh, three other people that are account managers and we have some part-time staff as well. All right. So they can handle the influx guys. I can't give a strong enough endorsement for a CPA out there. For those of you that have heard me on other podcasts, I've gone on, on many riffs and rants about um, past CPAs that I've had. Jonathan is not one of those. He's a, uh, he's one of the good <laughs> ones. Uh, I, at one point uh, over an eight year period of time, I had six different CPAs and, uh, you will not find that type of service or that type of um, cluelessness about dentistry with uh, Jonathan's uh, firm. So I give 100% full endorsement to uh, Jonathan and his firm. So why don't you give us, um, of course, why don't you give us the the opportunity to reach out to you for those of us that are looking for a good qualified CPA, Jonathan, and uh, give out your contact information if you don't mind. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, you can find me uh, online. Our, the website's dentistmetrics.com, D-E-N-T-I-S-T-M-E-T-R-I-C-S.com. Um, we're a fairly new company. We, we started up in 2013. Uh, you know, and since then, you know, we've, we, we've got about 100 practices. We help out in about 25 different states. Uh, and so we help people all over. Um, one of the things I'm really proud of is that, you know, even though we have been growing quite a bit and we have you know, increased number of team members, um, we, we, have, we have yet to lose a client in four and a half years due to service reasons. So, you know, like you said, you, 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 you twist all the, switched all of those times in CPAs, which must have been horrible for you. I'm sorry you had to do that. Oh, um, dude, you know, and, and the volume of, I mean, we just have a, no, oh a lot of different companies on, under our umbrella. So it's, it's been a nightmare every time, but finally yeah. we've settled in. Um, but, uh, but yeah, it was a nightmare. Go ahead. I'm sorry. That, that was, that's a great statistic that you've never left any, had anybody leave you because of poor service. That's great. Right. And so we've, we, we've been really lucky to, 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 to have, to have that. So don't, don't, you wouldn't, shouldn't expect that coming through. Uh, we work a lot with new practice owners, uh, a large percentage of our clients are people who ever purchased a practice or did a startup dental practice at some point in time. Uh, and so we you know, help those types of people out. If you want to give us a call, uh, I, I'll be honest with you. My email is a better way to be in contact with me than my phone. Um, my email is Jonathan, my name, I spell it J O N A T H A N at Dennis Metrics. That's J-O-N-A-T-H-A-N. That's the right way to spell the name Jonathan. Sorry to all you Jonathans with an O. <laughs> Jonathan with, yeah. a, with an A, yeah. not an O. <laughs> Which yeah, one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Or, or in, there's no extra H in there too. So um, so yeah, So and that's at DennisMetrics.com. Uh, if you go on to DennisMetrics.com, go all the way to the bottom, there's a place where you actually can book, book a phone call with me. That's a really good way to be able to get a, get a hold of me. Uh, you do that, you automatically get a co- you'll be able to see my calendar. You'll be able to book a time to speak with me. Uh, absolutely free. We have a, a free consultation to see, you know, what you've got going on, see if we'd be a good fit and how we can help you, uh, you know, do better in this crazy world of dentistry. Yeah. And somebody that's versed in dentistry and understands, I mean, he just threw out that 199, um, SARAC, uh, you know, um, deduction, uh, which was an adjustment. I, just I mean, think about your typical CPA has no idea what a CERAC machine is. You just have to get somebody that's that's really well versed in dentistry to really understand and be able to help you with planning and take advantage of everything um, to arm yourself with the best, you know, um, team that understands dentistry and how you can maximize your deductions uh, in this day and age and how you can decrease that uh, AGI that adjusted gross income. So. Um, awesome stuff, Jonathan. Much, much appreciated. 
Absolutely. Anytime. Appreciate you all you do for dentistry. And uh, one more thing for all of you podcast junkies out there. I forgot to mention it. Jonathan is also the host of the Start Your Dental Practice podcast. So just go to iTunes, Start Your Dental Practice podcast. If you want more of the types of things that we talked about today, Jonathan's on there. Um, uh, <laughs> oh, believe out me, don't, 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 don't tell them that because they're going to think they're going to get a lot of tax stuff. Actually, you know, we've got about 103 episodes, I think, of the Start Your Dental Practice podcast. And uh, I, I think I've made I've talked about tax on one episode. Just <laughs> ah, there you go. Oh, because because there, <laughs> I, I know, there's a lot of bright-eyed, bushy-tailed young dentists out there. They're like, yeah, this is great. Um, but uh, you know, I, I I understand it's not super exciting to a lot of people, uh, and it hasn't been for quite a while. It actually is somewhat exciting with all the changes that are occurring now. Yeah. But uh, you know, yeah, we, we we talk about cool stuff about like how to how to build better practices, how to how to how to enter the world of entrepreneurship inside of dentistry. So uh, we we've been there. Doctor, go check out Doctor Costas' episodes. They've been they've been some of the best. Yeah. So um, much appreciated, Jonathan. We will be uh, on a follow-up episode very soon. You have some exciting new stuff coming down the pipe, and I want to make sure that I help you um, launch those new projects that you have. So thanks so much, everybody. Absolutely. Thanks a lot. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, Jonathan Van Horn. This episode is being brought to you by Studio 360 Dental Lab and the $59 Full Zirconia Crown. Just like so many other industries, the dental lab business is rapidly changing. Advances in technology and materials has allowed labs to produce crowns, especially zirconia-based restorations, quicker, of higher quality, and more affordably than at any other time in history. This is the dental lab that I currently use, and aside from the price, you all know that I watch my overhead like a hawk, I've also been very pleased with their quality and customer service. Let's face it, no matter how great the technicians or technology is for any lab, when human beings are involved, sometimes issues arise. But at Studio 360 Dental Lab, these issues are rare. And if they do occur, you can count on Scott, Lisa, and Robert on their leadership team to make it right. So as fans and sponsors of the Dentalpreneur Podcast, Studio 360 Dental Lab will give you $10 off your first five cases while you give them a try. All you have to do is call 866-963-6885 and request a starter kit. And make sure you let them know that I sent you. Or you can visit studio360dentallab.com forward slash CRG. And that wraps it up for another episode of the Dentalpreneur Podcast. I thank you so much for joining us this week, and we will talk to you next week. Take care now. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for joining us today on the Dentalpreneur Podcast. Check out truedentalsuccess.com for full recaps of every show, a schedule of our live events, free video tutorials, and a whole host of practice-building resources. 